Hey friends, good morning. We are gonna work up in my vegetable garden today. These are the formal beds that are right as you walk up to the front door of my house. Um, I haven't ever explained kind of like the design theory behind this, but I wanted to touch on it really quickly. When you're installing a vegetable garden in your home in a raised bed or I mean even in ground quite frankly, it's really important that you place these things where you will see them and access them, if not daily, at least three to four times per week. So a great location is on your way to like maybe your garage or maybe it's a main pathway to your house or maybe this is where you take out the garbage in your alley. You want this to be someplace that you can pass by multiple times per week so you can keep an eye out for when things are ready to be harvested, when things need attention, if you have a pest that's gotten into the garden. So for me and my purposes, I loved this concept of creating this edible dining area in my front garden. So I have my edible component on one side, which is fashioned after like a French parterre style garden. And then on the other side is the dining room where we enjoy all of this delicious food. And also, I live in a very small house and really the top floor is maybe only like 800 square feet. And so it's literally a few steps to my kitchen, which I always find is like just the best of the best because if I'm in there and I'm cooking and I want to pop out and I want to grab an herb or something else to contribute to the meal, it is so easy to do so. And I like to give myself what I call low hanging fruit. I like to make things easy for myself. I feel like it's giving future Kate a gift. That's what I always say. How am I gonna give future Kate a gift to make her life easier? So today, we're going to pay some attention to this space. I need to harvest all the remaining produce. I've just got a few leeks and a few onions actually that I'm gonna pull out of the ground. I am also going to tackle my chamomile forest. <laughs> I love to grow my own herbs and what has happened this year is my chamomile has come up and it is glorious and I was doing some reading online and the scent is actually super beneficial throughout the garden and so I'm actually going to take it from a patch to kind of plugging it in in little cute spaces around kind of next to the peas and maybe in next to the radishes so we'll see how that shakes out but I want to feel very like flowy and creative in this space so that's what I'm going to do and then last but not least once I get all of these chores done I am going to be planting my leeks and my carrots for this coming growing season so let me show you what I have okay the first thing that I grabbed is actually um, a new variety to me so typically in the past, I have grown Bandit and King Richard leeks with great success. This year, I was at the nursery and they had its leek to Dorna. Okay, so this is leek to Dorna. And I've never grown this variety before, so this will be a fun little experiment for, for me to try out. Um, maturity is 110 days and it says best overwintering variety, wonderful flavor and texture. I find that every year, I overwinter my leeks and I like to put a couple of things in my garden that make me feel hopeful when spring comes and leeks are really one of them. So anyways, these looked really, really fabulous. And if you can see here, do you see how densely this is all packed? I know a lot of people who literally will take this and put it into the ground and that is not what we want to do. We want to plant one of these every four to six inches. I push the spacing, I plant mine every four, um, but that spacing works for me. You can also look up square foot gardening if you wanna try that method. That is a super fun method. And that one, I believe it's nine per square foot. But I'm gonna show you a trick when you receive vegetables like this that are all packed in super duper tight, I wanna show you a really easy technique so you can actually get all of them separated with very little root damage. The next thing I wanna show you are the carrots I'm gonna be putting in. Um, I am going to do like a very just classic standard. This is carrot scarlet nance. This is one I've planted for ages and ages. I have a little seed left over, so I'm gonna pop those guys in. And then a new one to me is this carrot pusa acita. Pusa Cita Black. This is one that I picked up from Baker Creek. Um, I tried growing it last year. I think I planted it too late. It just didn't do well for me, so I'm gonna try again. Cause I always like to try again. Oh, and the last thing on my to-do list today is I have some strawberries that did not perform this past growing season. Those strawberries, here's the scoop. When something doesn't perform for me, what I do is I like to give it one more shot. 
I will switch it to a new location and see if maybe I just didn't have it in the right place. Um, but I always like to give it one more shot before it goes on to its next home. So for these strawberries, I have a galvanized raised bed that you may have seen in my how to plant strawberries video, which was like, that was like one of the first videos I ever did. Um, I may add it to that patch because I have a second uh, galvanized bin that I brought in. So I may try it there and just see if maybe the warmth of that helps it a little bit, but it's not going to stay in the raised vegetable bed. So let me give you a little bit of a tour and I want to, I'm going to ask for your opinion on something. Okay. First of all, can we get a moment for these glorious leeks? Okay. I don't know what happened here, but that's fine. Just look at this monster. These have been so beautifully productive. I've absolutely loved them. Okay. Here's the strawberry patch, and this is the raspy berry, and it just did not perform for me. And so I'm gonna switch its location. What's interesting is I need to do kind of a lot of cleanup in here, but as I was digging around, I did see some early flowers. And let me see if I can find, oh yeah, right here. And that is, look, these are little buds right in here. So as opposed to a leaf, these are all buds. So it, it, here's the deal. It did this last year. It gives me hope that it's going to be like beautiful and productive. But then I had like six months of it just sending out runners. So I'm going to transplant it and see if it can't get its act together. These are all of my little baby daikons that are coming up. This is the sweet baby daikon but someone is just out here munching away, having the time of their life. I may use some Sluggo Plus. I was doing some online reading and it's an organic solution. And it is, from my research, certainly do your own, from my research, it seems to be very effective and safe to use around vegetables. So I'm gonna try it here, but you can see like this is just kind of like classic classic. Do you see that little like slimy situation right here? And then all of these leaves just munch to within an inch of their life. So yeah, I got to lay down some bait. So that might happen off camera, but that is also on my to-do list for today. And can we also get a moment for these adorable, adorable peas? Honestly, like this makes me so happy when you come out here and you see their little tendrils get going. It's like, this is spring. This is spring. And this makes me so joyous. I feel like I'm going to let these guys get maybe an inch taller. And then I'm going to start training them up onto the trellis. I also want to show you the garden from this location. So this has been, you know, this is such a beautiful space. And actually, it's really sweet. Like, I love this little pathway over to my neighbor's house. Because um, she comes in and clips herbs. And I, I love to share my garden. What I'm actually thinking though, is I'm kind of thinking that I might want to create an arch that goes from here over the top to this other raised bed to, so it kind of like, I don't know, I kind of think it might be fun to have a little bit of like a portal effect here. I don't know. It's something that I'm playing with. I'm just milling it around in my head. I'm just sitting with it for a second. I thought maybe it would be fun to grow like maybe beans over here or maybe some squash and then maybe on this panel over here I'll trellis tomatoes because I like to switch up where everything is planted every time I plant new. I it, put me, Drop me a note in the comments below. I would love to hear what your thoughts are but I think a little portal might be fun here. Okay let's get to work. So, 
So I guess now we add clean out the bird bath <laughs> to the to-do list. Okay, well that's fun. This is where my tomatoes were last year and it was a heavily used bed. And tomatoes tend to be a heavier feeder as well. So I'm going to do what you've seen me do before, which is amend the soil with compost. I add earthworm castings, but for this area, I am also going to add some, um, let's see here, I actually have right here. I was at the garden center and grabbed some organic garden tone. I'm gonna mix this in, in this area as well, just because I feel like after tomatoes have been planted here for a year, well, not quite a year, but for months on end, I feel like it needs just a little extra TLC. So that is what I'm gonna do. Um, if you only have compost, great. If you only have earthworm castings, also great. But think of this as like, imagine you've worked really hard all day and you get home and you're just starving for dinner. And then someone says, no, 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 get back to work. That is a garden bed. You always want to like feed your soil to get it ready for the next work day. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. In terms of earthworm castings and all of this, I just eyeball it. I always do a healthy dose of compost. As you can see, the soil level will always sink throughout the garden season. Where it goes, I'm just not sure. But I do a healthy dose of compost, and then I sprinkle in a couple of good handfuls of earthworm castings. So maybe if I'm doing like, maybe I'm doing this much per, I don't know, one or two square feet. You guys, I'm always such, I'm such a haphazard gardener but I just do a little bit of this situation. All right. What you're seeing me do here, by the way, is I am simply taking this concoction that I've put down on the raised bed and I'm really just mixing it into maybe the top three to four inches of soil and it's kind of like baking. I'm just bringing a little bit of the soil up from the ground and turning it all in. All right, friends, this is the roll technique. You're gonna pop one of your cells out of the tray. This is heavily seated. You are gonna place it in a cupped hand on one side. You're gonna take your other hand, cup it over the top, forms a little Sammy there, and you simply roll, roll, roll. And what I might do is I might do this six times, give it a little shake, do it again, shake it one more time, and what you have here is you have perfectly separated leaks every single time. I've already separated three cells, but I'm gonna leave the rest intact because this might be enough to fill this entire row. I'm gonna go on either side of my drip tape here and I'm gonna plant them probably about every three to four inches. I tend to do my spacing a little bit tighter just because it gets enough water and that has worked for me. Sometimes they say to plant your leeks six inches apart I usually go with four. And so when I plant my leeks, I actually start by making a trough, okay? And so I'm gonna make a trough all along both sides here, and I'll go to the other side to finish off, but I'm gonna make a trough like this, okay? Then I'm gonna take some leeks here, and actually, sometimes I take off my gloves for this part because they're so tiny and delicate. I'll go through and I will lay out my leeks about every four inches, kind of assembly line style. After I get these all lined up, I simply go down my line again, and I do this kind of like pinch together technique where I just set it upright and I bring the soil 
back in to meet the leak. All right, friends, we've just planted two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 leeks. And I have only used barely half of the three cells I've divided. So essentially in, in one and a half cells, we have planted enough leeks for most families. It is wild that in a few short months, these teeny tiny baby leeks will grow to a massive size like this. It's just amazing. Also, another note, I tuck violas and other flowers into my edible landscape because I love a space that feels beautiful and curated and a little bit eclectic and always floral. And so for me, I love tucking violas anywhere I can. Um, I even have some cone flower in here and then the chamomile is the most beautiful flower. Also a fantastic tea. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna artistically scatter them all throughout the garden. Oh, these leeks smell so stinking good. I'm so hungry. Okay, so I just have a few leeks left and then I think I may try to check some of these somewhere else. I don't know to be determined. But the rest of these, I am going to reach out to a couple girlfriends that I know that are gardeners and offer them some free leeks. All right, friends, next up, I am going to companion plant my carrots in front of my leek row. My leeks are going to be taller than these carrots, so it's kind of taller kids in the back, shorter kids in the front situation. My back is faced north, so the sun is gonna travel and I wanna make sure I'm getting as much sunlight as humanly possible here. I'm gonna sew these about every two to three inches apart. If they come up thicker than that, I'll probably just simply thin them as the season progresses. So let's jump in and get these carrots in the ground. Also, when I plant my carrots, I actually always take my gloves off because it's such a small seed that I find I just am not as nimble if I have my gardening gloves on. leeks and carrots in the ground. I think I only want to do one other thing today and I want to transplant some of this chamomile over to the area where my peas are growing and where my little radishes are coming in. I kind of feel like I maybe want to plant some around the ends of that trellis just to kind of nestle it in a bit. So obviously my chamomile is super happy in the garden. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this space so it's ready for more plants to go in. So I'm kind of, when you see me do things, I like to set myself up for the next project. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this whole area because I feel like this is prime territory for getting the next crop in. Oh my gosh. You guys, look how many chamomile plants I have. This is what I get for just scattering seed. <laughs> when I'm digging this up, I'm just grabbing giant handfuls of the roots with a ton of dirt attached just so I'm not disturbing the root system as much as possible. By the way, this is a super hardy plant. So if I do disturb the roots a little bit, like this one doesn't have that much soil around it, it's not a big deal because it's happy as a clam. It's early in the garden season. And so even if it does have a little bit of shock, it has plenty of time to recover and grow flowers. I'm kind of liking this. I know that these are going to fluff out and what they do is they send up this kind of wispy stem with the little flower on top. So I kind of thought this might be fun. It gives it lots of room to spill over this way. It kind of is going to come up and be frothy right around my echinacea. Also more holes. These monsters, these slugs have been having a heyday, man. Oh, time to go to work. 
<laughs> time to do battle. Really wonderful morning in the garden. I got a ton accomplished. The only thing left to do is a little bit of watering and then I am on to the rest of my day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you won Adalia and haven't yet responded, I've put my email in your comments. So please reach out to me so I can get your Dahlia in the mail ASAP. In any event, I hope you have a wonderful day and say hello to your garden for me.